not sponsored or affiliated with any company or product. Dexit Pro is not paid, endorsed, or receiving any benefits for mentioning or using any specific items. All content is based on independent testing and personal experience, shared to help viewers make smarter choices. Hey, what's up guys? This is Dex and you're watching Dexic Pro. If you're looking to upgrade your PlayStation 4 or PlayStation 5 storage with an external SSD but don't want to waste your money on the wrong one, this video is yours. I'll break down what actually matters when choosing an SSD, showing you how to test its speed and walk you through setup. And yes guys, I will reveal the SSD I personally tested after we covered the essentials. Because let's be honest, nothing kills the gaming boss like hitting download and seeing storage full. So this guide is about avoiding that moment and unlocking smoother and faster gameplay without deleting your favorites. Let's start with what your console supports. On PlayStation 4, you can install and play games directly from an external SSD. On PlayStation 5, on the other hand, you can play PS4 games from an external SSD and store PS5 games externally, but you will need to move them back to internal storage to play. So whether you're gaming or just managing space, an external SSD gives you flexibility, faster load times, and a smoother experience compared to traditional hard drives. Think of it this way, that for PlayStation 5 users, external SSDs act like a super fast waiting room for native titles. You can't play them directly, but transferring them back takes minutes, not hours like redownloading. So let's talk SSD architecture. SATA SSDs are reliable and affordable with speeds around 500 megabytes per second. NVMe SSDs, on the other hand, are much faster, up to 2000 megabytes per second or more but they need the right USB interface to perform, guys. Most external SSDs use the M2 form factor inside the casing, but what really matters is the interface, like how the SSD communicates with your console. It's like owning a Formula 1 car but driving it on a residential street. So your SSD's internal speed means nothing if the USB interface is the bottleneck. Okay, here is the breakdown. USB 3.2 generation 1 equals 5 gigabit per second. USB 3.2 generation 2 equals 10 gigabit per second. USB 3.2 generation 2x2 2 2 equals 20 gigabit per second. And eventually, Thunderbolt 3.4 equals 40 gigabytes per second. So for PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5, USB 3.2 generation 2 is the sweetest spot, guys. It supports full SATA speeds and works with most external SSDs. If you want next level performance, Generation 2x2 unlocks true NVMe potential. But don't be fooled by plug shapes. I mean, USB-C doesn't automatically mean fast, guys. Always check the actual USB generation behind the connector. PlayStation 4 ports are typically USB 3.0 Generation 1 capped at 5 gigabit per second. But PlayStation 5 ports can support Generation 2 or even Generation 2x2, which makes a huge difference in real-world speed. And here is the drive I tested, guys. The ADATA SD810 1TB external SSD. Let's look at the specifications that really matter. The interface is USB 3.2 Generation 2x2 with 20 gigabits of speed. Performance is up to 2000 MB per second read and write. The form factor is M2 2280 inside the rugged enclosure. The body is made of aluminum alloy for heat dissipation. Durability meets IP68 rated waterproof and dustproof. Drop protection is military STD 810G certified and it's compatible with Windows, Mac OS, Android, Linux and yes, PlayStation consoles. This drive is built for speed and resilience. Whether you're gaming, editing, or backing up, it's all ready. The aluminum casing isn't just for looks, guys. It actually helps prevent thermal throttling during long sessions. And the rugged build means you won't panic if it takes a tumble. Okay, check this out, guys. I just ran Crystal Disk application on this SSD to test real-world performance, and here is what I got. But before I jump into the numbers, let me quickly break down what this term means that you can understand later on you can make the tremendous choice. SEQ1M means sequential read and write of 1 megabyte blocks. It's ideal for large files like game installs and backups. Q8T1 equals 8 queues, 1 thread. 
This simulates high load scenarios like copying multiple files at once. Q1T1 equals 1Q1 thread. It means more realistic for everyday tasks or console game loading. R&D 4K refers to random read and write for 4 kilobyte blocks. It's critical for system responsiveness. Q32T16 means 32 queues, 16 threads. This stresses the SSD's controller under multitasking. And Q1T1 shows how snappy the drive feels when launching apps or browsing folders. These numbers are legit, guys. And yes, I ran the test twice. No cache tricks, no thermal throttling. Running the benchmark twice is crucial, guys. I mean, it confirms that the SSD isn't just relying on the short-term cache bursts or suffering from heat-related slowdowns. Okay, guys, now it's time to teach you how to use your SSD as external storage on your PlayStation 5 to install new games on it or even move your installed games from system storage to SSD storage. First, plug the SSD into the USB-C or USB-A port on your PlayStation 5. Go to Settings storage as you can see i already have games installed on my playstation 5 system storage by entering games and apps it shows the installed games with the size that took up the system storage now i get back to the usb extended storage and hit format as usb extended storage hit on yes to format the drive keep in mind that all data on your external ssd storage will be gone guys so make sure that you already made a backup if they are important for you Okay, the SSD storage is formatted as an extended partition and ready to use. If you want to disconnect your USB SSD from PlayStation 5, you have to hit the safety remove from PlayStation 5, otherwise data corruption may occur guys. Also you can format it as the XFAT file system so that you can connect it to your computer and use it later on. You can also set the default installation location with this option, whether it's console storage or USB extended storage. Now let's move session 4 games to the SSD. Go to settings, storage, console storage, games and apps. Select your game, choose move to extended storage. The system will transfer it to the SSD and you can launch it directly from there later. To store PlayStation 5 games on the SSD, you need to do the same guys. But here is the thing, you won't be able to play them from the SSD, but you can store them and move them back when needed. That's how they designed PlayStation 5, and this option is just meant to save internal space. You could just think of it as a smart archive system. You're not deleting games, but stacking them for quick access when needed. So as you can see, the game has disappeared from here. And the reason why is because I'm still in system storage. So if I get back to storage and then USB extended storage, games and apps, then here it is, guys. Okay, let me test the game if it works fine on external SSD, guys. Okay, seems like it is working like a charm. Let's move the game back from USB SSD to PlayStation 5 storage by going to settings storage, USB extended storage, games and apps, select items to move, and then move. Now game starts to move from USB SSD back to system storage. Ok, let's go and set it up for PlayStation 4 guys. Plug the SSD into a PlayStation 4 USB port. Go to settings, devices, USB storage devices. Select the SSD and choose format as extended storage. Next, format, yes. Again guys, all data on your external USB SSD storage will be gone. So make sure that you already made a backup. Okay, SSD is ready as extended storage to install or move PlayStation 4 games on it. If you get back to storage option, you see that it appears here. You can set application install location default by hitting options and choosing system storage or extended storage, which is SSD here. Now you can install and launch games directly from SSD. This setup gives you instant breathing room. Let's move one of the PlayStation 4 games to the SSD. Go to storage. System Storage, Applications, Hit Options, Move to Extended Storage. Select games you want to move from System Storage to External USB Storage. Hit on Move, then hit on OK to start. OK, to check if it's moved, you get back to Storage, Extended Storage, 
applications. And here it is, guys. It's super easy and fast, especially if you use SSD technology. So let's test the game if it works fine by firing it up. Okay, now the game is working like a charm and I think there is no problem. So before you head out to buy any SSD, here is what you need to remember guys. Know your console's USB port type. PlayStation 4 supports USB 3, while PlayStation 5 benefits from USB 3.2 generation 2 or higher. Don't let the USB C shape fool you. Check the actual speed standard. Choose an SSD with real specifications. Look for benchmark performance, not just flashy packaging. A good SSD should deliver consistent speeds, guys, not just big numbers that drop after few gigabytes. Use Crystal Disk Mark application to verify performance and run it twice. If the results are stable, you've got a reliable drive. If they drop dramatically, it's likely relying on cache tricks or poor thermal design. Match your SSD to your use case. For PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5 game installs, sequential speed matters most. For responsiveness and file browsing, random 4K speeds are key. This ADATA SD810 checks all the boxes for my test. It's fast, rugged, and fully compatible with both consoles. It's not just about storage, guys. It's about performance you can trust. And if this video helped you make a smarter and technical decision, hit that like button, subscribe to Dextech Pro, and share your SSD setup or questions in the comment section. Thank you for watching and have a good one. Subscribe to Dextech Pro YouTube channel. Channel.